ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستأذيه ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال الله تبارك وتعالى شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان وعن سلمان رضي الله عنه قال خطبنا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم في آخر يوم من شعبان قال يا أيها الناس قد أضلكم شهر عظيم مبارك شهر فيه ليلة خير من ألف شهر شهر جعل الله صيامه فريضا وقيام ليله تطوعا من تقرب فيه بخصبة من الخير كان كمن أدى فريضة فيما سواه ومن أدى فريضة فيه كان كمن أدى سبعين فريضة فيما سواه إلى آخر الحديث رواه ابن خزيمة في صحيحه ثم قال صح الخبر صدق الله العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاكرين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا مولانا محمد عدد ما ذكره الذاكرون وصل على سيدنا مولانا محمد عدد ما غفل عن ذكره الغافلون اللهم صل وسلم على عبدك ورسولك اللهم صل على سيدنا مولانا محمد أفضل صلواتك بعدد معلومات. My respected brothers and sisters and honorable elders, we are here today. Allah has blessed us with another opportunity, with another month of Ramadan. This is a month that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to look forward to months in advance. There is a statement from our asaf, from our elders, from the time of Sahaba and from the time of Tabi'een. <coughs> That they used to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, كانوا يدعون الله لستة أشهر أي يروه رمضان. They used to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for six months to see the month of Ramadan. And then for the next six months, they used to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept the good deeds that they performed during the month of Ramadan. So the entire year is all about the month of Ramadan. Because each and every moment of the month of Ramadan is so valuable and so precious that even if you were to exchange the whole year for it, you will not be able to do so. This is the time that Allah has chosen for the revelation of his scripture. Shahru Ramadan, الذي أنزل فيه القرآن The month of Ramadan is that time, is that month of the year in which Allah revealed his Quran. And if we take a glimpse of the history of the prophets, we find that all the scriptures, they were revealed on some day of the month of Ramadan. 
whether it's Taurat or Injil or Zabur, all the scriptures, all the divine scriptures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they were, they were revealed on one of the days of the month of Ramadan. So Allah has chosen the month of Ramadan for this special event, for the revelation of His speech, for the revelation of His scripture. This month is very special. There's nothing like it in the world. Therefore, Rasulullah used to welcome the month of Ramadan in very, very special enthusiasm. And the noble companions, عنهم, they mentioned that we used to notice three changes in the in the schedule of Rasulullah sallallahu when the month of Ramadan would arrive. They say that the very first thing that we used to notice is that there, were, there would be an increase in the worship of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa So the worship habit of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would change to a higher gear. He would start making more ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now if you know even a little bit about the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know that even in regular times, no one, could, no one could even come close to the ibadah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He used to stand every night before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for so long that his feet would become swollen. Because of all that standing, because of all that qiyam in prayer. And during the daytime, it was not like he was resting all day. He was busy all day. <laughs> during the daytime, you have a long task. So during, during the daytime, Rasulullah would be engaged in all sorts of work, in all sorts of da'wah, in all sorts of responsibility given to him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And after Fajr, he would not go to bed. After Fajr, he would remain in the masjid, making the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until the time of Ishraq would enter. And when the sun would have risen, after that he would perform Salat al Ishraq and then he would go home. And again, he would have a long day ahead of him. And at night time, the whole night was not dedicated for rest. Only a portion of that night was dedicated for rest and a portion of that night was dedicated for the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This was normal. This was in, in months other than the month of Ramadan. Imagine what would be an increase over that during the month of Ramadan. So during the month of Ramadan, the Sahaba radiallahu would clearly notice this change in the ibadah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this was the first thing that would be noticed when the month of Ramadan would arrive, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would increase his ibadah and his worship. The second thing that would be noticed was the acts of charity by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His generosity. It is mentioned in a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Aisha radiallahu anha. She said that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would become even more generous during the month of Ramadan than the heavy going wings. His generosity would, would reach the highest level of all here. He would open his heart. He would open his hands. He would spend in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala day and night. And that spending was in no way comparable to the spending that would take place in other months of the year. 
Even though in other months of the year, Rasulullah was also more generous than anyone else and more charitable than anyone else. But during the month of Ramadan, his acts of charity and his generosity would become literally unbeatable. So Rasulullah would become so generous, so charitable during the month of Ramadan that no day, no night would pass by without him making a contribution, without him, him making a charity, without him helping someone, without him, without him earning the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that this is the month, the month of Sadaqah, Shahru Sadaqah. This is the month in which charity is given day and night because Allah loves the acts of charity. Allah loves the acts of generosity. So this is the second thing that would become noticed when the month of Ramadan would arrive in the life of Rasulullah The third thing that would also become clearly noticeable in the life of Rasulullah by the arrival of the month of Ramadan is that he would not only increase his supplications, his dua, his prayers to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but also he would, he would cry so much in his dua, especially during the month of Ramadan, because this is also the month of dua. In this month, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts the prayers more than any other month of the year. In this month, the prayers are granted. In this month, the du'as are granted. The du'as are proved. So in this month, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would make so much du'a to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, let's look at this hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in which his sermon is mentioned. The sermon that he would normally give on the last day of the month of Sha'ban. Every year, when the last day of the month of Sha'ban would, would, would arrive, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa would gather his noble companions radiallahu anhum, and then he would address them, and then he would give them instructions on what to do during the month of Ramadan. So today, alhamdulillah, it is the first day of the month of Ramadan. We have all this month ahead of us, alhamdulillah. And we can benefit from these instructions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This year, after many, many years, the Ramadan brings us a special gift of five Fridays. We will have five Fridays, inshallah. This doesn't happen often. Normally, we only get four Fridays. But this Ramadan is special for each and every single one of us because we will get to have five gifts, five gifts of Fridays from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during the month of Ramadan. So, we will talk about different things each Friday, inshallah. <coughs> Today, I would like to go through this hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam before you to give you a list of things that we can do during the month of Ramadan, inshallah. Next Friday, we will learn the rulings of fasting, the rulings of the month of Ramadan, important things about the month of Ramadan, important things about fasting, who should fast, and who's allowed to skip fast, and what are the things that we can accomplish through fasting, inshallah. And on third Friday, we will talk about i'tikaf, inshallah, and the rulings, the rulings of i'tikaf. And on fourth Friday, we will talk about, inshallah, Laylatul Qadr, its importance, its significance, and its virtue. And on the last Friday, inshallah, we will talk about Sadaqatul Fitr, Zakatul Fitr, and we will talk about Eidain and the end of the month of Ramadan, inshallah. So, alhamdulillah, we have five Fridays this year, inshallah. So, without any further delay, let's look at the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Salman radiallahu anhu. Salman al-Farisi radiallahu anhu, he says, 
that on the last day of the month of Sha'ban, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam addressed us and he said, Ya ayyuhal nas, qad adhullakum shahrun azim. O people, O mankind, O believers, a great month has cast over, has cast its shadow over you. Shahr azimun mubarak. And it is a blessed month. Shahrun fihi laylatun khayrun min alfi shahr. It is a month in which there is a night which is better than 1,000 months. A night better than 1,000 months. Shahrun ja'alallahu siyamahu fariba. This is a month in which Allah has made obligatory fasting on the days. So during the day, every adult must fast unless he has an excuse, unless he has a reason to skip that fasting which is approved by the Sharia. But in normal circumstances, every adult, male and female, must observe the fasting of the days of the month of Ramadan because Allah has made it obligatory. It is fark. It is in fact among the pillars of Islam. And the pillars of Islam are Karimatul uh, Tayyibah, uh, the Shahada, and prayer, and Zakah, and fasting, and Hajj. So fasting is one of the pillars of Islam. And the only fasting that is obligatory is the fasting of the month of Ramadan. There is no other day or other month of the year in which fasting is obligatory. <laughs> Allah has made the, the prayers at night during the month of Ramadan a sunnah, an, uh, an act of uh, a voluntary act. So it is established by Rasulullah and Alhamdulillah, we see Muslims all over the world. They, they rush towards joining Salat al-Taraweeh in the nights of the month of Ramadan. We get to listen to the recitation of Quran. We get to perform more sujood, more prostration before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you count, we pray alhamdulillah 20 rak'ah in Salat al-Taraweeh. And we, in 20 rak'ah, you get 40 sujood. So you get 40 sujood additional from other days of the year or from other nights of the year. And this is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. مَنْ تَقَرَّبَ فِيهِ بِخَصْلَةٍ مِّنَ الْخَيْرِ كَانَ كَمَنْ أَدَّى فَرِيضَةً فِي نَا سِوَى Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, In this month, whoever performed any good deed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him the reward of performing a fawq in any other days of the year. So if you give sadaqah, you will get the reward of zakah. And remember, voluntary act can never reach the level of obligatory act. Obligatory acts always come first, always come on top. And the reward of obligatory act is also more. So in the month of Ramadan, if you perform any voluntary good deeds, whether you give sadaqah, or you perform naf nafila, your reward will be increased to the level of obligatory act. And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, And whoever performed an obligatory act during the month of Ramadan, including the fasting, including the obligatory prayers, including zakah that you give during the month of Ramadan, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increases the reward of that obligatory act to 70 times. So you get reward of 70 for one. Then, وَهُوَ شَهْرُ الصَّرْ This is the month of patience. We, we demonstrate patience through our actions and during the days of the month and during the nights of the month because this is the month of patience. So patience is an, is an exceptional thing that we get to learn from the month of Ramadan. And the reward of patience is only paradise. If you do demonstrate patience, if you do endure all of this, seeking reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then in return, Allah will give you entry into paradise, admission into paradise. It is the month of sympathy. Showing sympathy towards those who are less fortunate. Showing sympathy to those who are starved. Showing sympathy to those who are in need of help. 
us, and especially praying for those who are uh, uh, who are afflicted and those who are in need and those who are in trouble. Praying for those is also an act of sympathy on your part and on our part. This is the month in which the sustenance of a believer is increased. No other month of the year is that in which the sustenance of the believer is increased only based on the month. But this is the month, the month of Ramadan, in which the sustenance of a believer is increased. So Allah gives you more. You may see, you may see the number increase, but if the number does not increase, you see the blessings increase in that sustenance that you already have. And how you realize that? Because you get the most benefit from the from the same value that you could not get any in any other time of the month, in any in any other time of the year. Man fakkara fihi And one of the reasons why Allah increases your sustenance is so you can share your sustenance with others. You can help others. You can you can share your blessings that Allah has bestowed upon you with others. So, so whoever allowed another fasting person to break his fast with your sustenance, with your gift, with your food, with your with your drink, with your meal, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Kana maqfiratan li This act will become a source of forgiveness of your of your sins. Allah will forgive your sins. And Allah will emancipate your neck from the hellfire. And you will also get the same reward as that who, who observed the fast. So you will get your reward of fasting and you will get the reward of fasting of that person who observed the fast and you allow him to break his fast with your date or with your food, or with your milk, or with your drink, or with anything that you provided for him to break his fast. قَالُوا يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ Sahaba رَضْوَانُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ أَجْمَعِينَ They said, يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ لَيْسَ كُلُّنَا يَجِدُ مَا يُفَقِّرُ الصَّائِمِ Not each and every single one of us have enough means to give food to the fasting person. So what should we do? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, يُعْتِ اللَّهُ هَذَا الثَّوَابِ مَنْ فَقَّرَ صَائِمًا عَلَى تَمْرَى أَوْ عَلَى شَرْبَةِ مَا أَوْ مَدْقَةِ مَا Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah even gives this reward, even if someone only gave a date to a fasting person to break his fast, or only gave a sip of water, or a sip of milk, not, you don't have to, you don't have to have the ability to provide full meal to a fasting person. You can also give a date to a fasting person. You can also give a cup of milk or a sip of milk or a sip of water to a fasting person in order for him to break his fast and Allah will give you the same reward. I will jump to the last. There are four things that Rasulullah said, said, There are four things that you should do in abundance. In more, free, in, uh, more frequently, those four things are Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Shahadatu an la ilaha illallah wa tastaghfiruna. You say la ilaha illallah as many times as you can during the days of the, of the month and during the nights of the month. And in order to say la ilaha illallah, you don't even need to have wudu. You can say it while you're sitting in your office. You're, you can say it while you're driving. You can say it while you're walking. So continue to say La ilaha illallah as many times as you can. Number two, you make istighfar. You say astaghfirullah as many times as you can. Or you may you may preferably say astaghfirullah rabbi min kulli dhanbin wa atubu ilayhi. So make istighfar as many times as you can. For these two things you do not even need wudu. And the next two things that you, all, you should also do in abundance, you should make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for jannah for paradise. فَتَسْأَلُونَ Allah al jannah You make dua to Allah. Oh Allah, if, grant me admission into paradise. Allahumma inni as'aluka al jannah Allahumma inni as'aluka al jannah Allahumma inni as'aluka al jannah So you seek admission into paradise from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for paradise. And the fourth thing, the last thing, وَتَعُوذُونَ بِهِ مِنَ النَّارِ And you seek 
protection from Allah. You seek refuge in Allah from hellfire. So you say, Allahumma inni as'aluka al-jannah wa a'udhu bika min al-nar. Oh Allah, I ask you for your jannah and I ask your protection. I ask for refuge in you from the hellfire. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to practice upon the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ameen. Wa akhru da'wana. Alhamdulillah wa bil'an. ومن دخله لا يضمأ أبدا وورد عنه صلى الله عليه وسلم 
أنه قال إن للصائم عند فطره لدعوة ما ترد واعلموا أن الله قد فرض عليكم في هذا الشهر صياما وسن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قياما فصوموا نهاره وقوموا ليلة فطوبى لمن اجتهد فيه في العبادة واستحق مراتب الزيادة والإحسان وويل ثم ويل لمن أدركه هذا الشهر المبارك فلم يصم أو صام ولم يقم أو قام وكأنه لم يقم فكم من صائم ليس من صومه إلا العطش وكم من قائم ليس من قيامه إلا السهر والتغيان الله الله عباد الله اتقوا الله تعالى وتزودوا فإن خير الزاد التقوى واتركوا اتباع الهوى فمن تراوى آثر الحياة الدنيا فإن الجحيم هي المأوى ومن خاب مقام ربه ونهى النفس عن الهوى فإن الجنة هي المأوى ذات الخيرات الحسان وزكوا أنفسكم بالصوم وروحوا أرواحكم بقراءة القرآن في التراويح وأقل النوم ولا تكونوا كالذين غفلوا عن البعث والحشر وهجروا مخالفة الهوى والصبر وتعيشوا في نعيم الدنيا الدنيا وفاتهم فضل الآخرة والدرجات العلية اللهم يا حنان يا منان لك الحمد على أن قربت إلينا شهر رمضان وقويتنا على الصيام والقيام فصمنا نهاره وقمنا ليلة ونحن عبادك العصاة المجرمون إن لم ترحمنا فمن يرحمنا وإن لم تغفر لنا فمن يغفرنا فأعتق رقابنا ورقاب آبائنا وأمهاتنا من النيران واخصصنا بمزيد فضلك ولطيف نعمتك وأدخلنا الجنة من الريان والحمد لله رب العالمين أعوذ بالله السميع عليم من الشيطان الرجيم وإذا سألك عبادي عني فإني قريب أجيب دعوة الداعي إذا دعان الحمد لله الحمد لله الكريم الجليل الذي خلق الخلق وبعث منهم رسلا وأنبياء ذوي المهابة والتبديل نحمده حمد كثيرا على أن شرفنا بأن جعلنا من أمة حبيبه وصفيه مكمل قصر النبوة بحسن التكميل ونشكره على أن فضلنا بعد الشهور على بعض وأدار علينا من الشهور الفاضلة غدب وشعبان ورمضان وفضله أكبر التفضيل نشهد أن لا إله إلا هو وحده لا شريك له ولا مد له ولا مد له ولا مثيل وأن سيدنا مولانا محمد عبده ورسوله صاحب المقام المحمود والعز الجميل صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه الهادين إلى سواء السبيل أما بعد أيها الناس عليكم بكثرة الصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنام اللهم صل على سيدنا مولانا محمد شفيع العصاة ومطاهره من الذنوب ودافع همومهم وكاشف الكروب صلاة دائمة بنوامك باقية ببقائك وصل على جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين وجميع الملائكة المقربين وعلى جميع الصحابة والتابعين وسائر عبادك الصالحين لا سيما على المدر التمام سيدنا أبي بكر بن الصديق رضي الله عنه وعلى ثاني الخلفاء سيدنا عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله عنه وعلى ثالث الخلفاء سيدنا عثمان بن عفان رضي الله وعلى رابع القلفاء سيدنا علي بن أبي طالب رضي الله عنه وعلى سيدنا الحسن وسيدنا الحسين رضي الله عنهما